Marguerite Bennett and Marguerite Sauvage conclude their heartwarming and inspirational Superwoman story as Kara finds herself tapping back into a feeling she swore she never would use again, as Lenari's kin come for the Starfall Jewel, and will do anything, including destroying the moon, to get it. Marguerite Bennett wonderfully capped off her take on Cara Danvers and the legacy she sees herself owed and the pain that comes with being considered as the quote-unquote other Kryptonian. I thoroughly enjoyed Cara using the anger she felt from how people treat her and how people don't consider her the heir to the Superman legacy, which she technically should be, but then also there's having her stating she knows it's wrong to tap into that anger since it was never her cousin or family's fault and that was never her legacy that she wanted. The new character Lenari helping Kara with the lessons Kara herself taught her were so great and it was a great job differing itself from Superman's legacy and what he wants to be viewed as and ultimately succeeding in becoming more than a hero but an ideal to strive towards which I thought was really nice. Marguerite Savage again just wowed me with her beautiful red and blue watercolours that like I said in my review of issue 1 added a very ethereal dreamlike atmosphere to the book. Her work in the action pages was brilliant and the designs for Kara's new dress like costume and the monsters was really fun. Future State Kara Zor-El Superwoman Issue 2 was a heartwarming, inspirational, quote-unquote, final story for Kara Danvers, reaffirming what sets her apart from her cousin and her family, as well as teaching us the lesson that you don't always need to follow after your family's legacy and you can forge your own path in life. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Future State Kara zor Superwoman Issue 2 finds Kara confronting the monstrous Kimara, who tells her to stand down. One of the other monsters asks if Kimara knew a Kryptonian was there, but Kimara knows that there are only two and doesn't know who Kara is, which upsets the hero. Kimara says that Lenari is a murderer who killed her own family and came to Earth for a fresh start. Kimara explains that they come from a species called the Lithi, and eons ago the family split control of the Starfall Jewel, a gem that would make gods of them, but some of the people didn't like being lorded over people known better than themselves, and because of it, a feud begun, and her brother, Lenari's father, dug up the jewel and it became part of him. But only one can wield it, and for Anella to use it, the former user must die. The man knew that his family couldn't survive the war, so he tore the jewel from his heart and killed himself so that Lenari can inherit it. Kamara thinks that because of this, Lenari is responsible for her brother's death, since if she was stronger and a better child, they wouldn't have needed protection. Kamara says that the whelps of the Star Swamp were the last of their kind, like Kara is, just circling the drain on her rock, taking in trash and calling it family. The being says that Kara reminds them of the retired gunslinger trope, asking how it feels to come out of retirement for a lying, vicious murderer who abandoned her own people. Kara, meanwhile, wishes that she had learned Crypto's lesson sooner, that he accepted her as she already is. Kara smashes the monster away, saying that Lenari is under her protection. Protection. Kimara says that in that case, a Superwoman will be the one to cut the jewel from the girl, seeing as their teeth cannot pierce the girl's skin. The being show off a quantum detonator, demanding that Superwoman do as they say or they'll detonate it. Superwoman knows that it's a bluff, but the monsters say it's not, activating the vice and blowing up the dome. In the Inferno, Kara thinks about the people that she has helped and saved, and to see it all threatened now by a usurper who crashes in looking to steal powers and one's legacy, and steal the story that they should have had. She wonders how she's going to stop this from happening, flying into a rage, beating the monsters over and over, and knowing that she is despised, hated, and rejected, having fought so hard for a world and any other world that would have her. But now, if they want a villain or someone to loathe or some sort of tyrant queen, she will give it to them. Kara demands to know if the monsters know who she is, scaring them, but Lenari calms her, saying that she has seen over the weeks how much good might come from what she is and what she does and also how much danger there is going back down the old path, a path Kara just stepped back onto. Lenari doesn't want to be the reason that Kara loses what she fought so hard to find in herself, and she doesn't want that life for herself either. Lenari takes to the skies, hoping Kara understands as she takes Kara's powers again, confronting her people. Kara knows that if her power can't save her, something else might be able to, as Lenari morphs into a giant version of her kin, wrapping them up in her tail and asking them 
what they want, and it cannot be about her. Kamara says that she doesn't want to wake up afraid Lenari is going to hunt them down and kill them. Lenari asks that if she forswore her family feuds and a life in the star swamp, then the others will leave her in peace and the monsters agree to never come back. Lenari says that because they agree to these terms, they will all now live and all will as she frees herself from the gem thanks to renouncing her family's ways, returning to Kara and telling her friend that she is finally free. Lenari confronts the now humanoid Kamara, telling her that she used the powers that she took from Superwoman to become stronger than ever, burning up her own abilities along with her aunt's, as well as the gem, telling her the Starfall jewel is no more. Lenari knows that all things will come back one day, but for now, her aunt is going to stay with them on the moon colony and going to learn about cities and flowers and people and dogs and learn how to stop inheriting nothing but power and rage and blood, and instead build something better. Lenari and Kamara begin helping the people as Kara's powers very slowly come back. Lenari doesn't want to think that without her powers, people saw Kara at their level and were kinder to her, especially when they accepted her cousin on Earth without him sacrificing his powers. Lenari knows that Kara would have been caused much pain, but she did what she did and her reward was the doing of the thing and through this, the people realized how good and amazing and super Kara Danvers was. Eventually, the woman finished rebuilding the habitat as more of Kamara's people come and join the moon colony, wanting what Superwoman offered to the people and to come and learn and grow. Years go by and Kara begins getting older and older as she and Lenari continue to teach many others. Lenari comes to realize that what was once called the Fortress of Solitude deserves a new name now. As centuries after Superwoman has passed on, Lenari continues her teachings, telling the people Superwoman's mantle isn't something to be passed down like Superman's, it's something to aspire to and for people to do what they can and not live in the shadow of the birthright they think they deserve. Lenari herself soon begins to age as she guides her granddaughter, showing her that this place and people that Kara taught and cared for and raised and cherished still thrive as an eternal garden. An eternal